My brothers and sisters in Christ, today the church celebrates the feast of St. Mark the Evangelist, a feast we celebrate every year, but extremely fitting in this year of cycle B, uh, the, the current year of the Sunday lectionary cycle that we're in, which focuses on the Gospel of Mark. Ironically, and I'll, I'll get more to this in a moment, we actually hear very little from Mark during the season of Easter. And as I said, I'll mention why in a moment. But there's, there's reason why we don't hear much from Mark uh, during the Easter season. But Mark, when you compare him to the other gospel writers of Matthew, Luke, and John, Mark, many scholars believe that Mark's gospel was the first to be composed. But regardless even of its dating, the question is, who is Mark? Okay, Matthew and John are easy because they're of the twelve. Uh, Luke has has, ha has his own story that's been constructed uh, through study, but Mark is traditionally associated with the John Mark that is mentioned throughout the Acts of the Apostles, and that is mentioned in today's first reading from the first letter of Saint Peter. Mark as the associ associate of Saint Peter there in Rome, or as he says it in code in Babylon with him. But Mark was considered to be an aid to Peter in his ministry, and therefore the lens through which Mark writes his gospel is very much that of Peter himself. And if you read through the gospel of Mark, it's perhaps the most pointed about the failure of the disciples. This would make sense coming from the, the leadership and humility of Peter that so often at the forefront goes from brilliant moments to the, the most foolish failures. And so Mark writes from the, this great lens to give us insight into the discipleship of St. Peter and to write to the perspective of Christians in the city of Rome in the first century. So this is a little bit about the person of Mark himself, but we can turn our attention to the readings for today's feast day, which I already mentioned, the first reading from 1 Peter makes mention of Mark being with him. But the gospel passage comes from what is known as the longer ending of the gospel of Mark. Interestingly enough, and if you look in your Bible, you can see this, most will note a shorter ending and a longer ending. The reason for that is the original Gospel of Mark ends very abruptly at the empty tomb. It's almost written as a cliffhanger. The tomb is empty, everyone's in shock, and what do we do next? Later, not likely under Mark's own authorship, but nonetheless considered part of the canon of Scripture by the Church, there was a, a summary of sorts appended that's called the longer ending. And by this, I mean, during the season of Easter, we hear a lot of post-resurrection accounts, whether it's the appearances of Jesus in the upper room that happened in Luke and John, whether it's the road to Emmaus, appearance of Jesus to the disciples on the Sea of Galilee. There's these very appearances. The, the longer ending of Mark just summarizes them. It doesn't give you the narrative. It just says Jesus appeared to so-and-so and so-and-so and, -so and, -so and to this group of people and did this. And then it ends with what we hear today this brief little sending forth of Jesus. And I like it because in the season of Easter, we can get caught up in waiting for the Ascension and Pentecost for this kind of great commissioning go forth moment. But in fact, the, the very spirit of Easter joy drives us forth. Those of us especially, we've received the Holy Spirit in baptism. And so today's gospel is not so much literally concerned with uh, the commissioning through the, the sending of the Holy Spirit, but just Jesus before he ascends into heaven just says, go into the world. That's how this longer ending of Mark's gospel. Yes, Jesus has gone through his passion, his death, he's raised, the tomb is empty, he appears to them and says, now you go out into the world. I like it because this is for us, and this is the entirety of the, the Easter capturing of the Gospel of Mark, but it also shows us the now what, which is as witnesses to the glory of God, as recipients of the great Easter joy of the grace of new life and baptism, what are we to do? Go out into the world. Go out into the world, not just in action, but in witness of lives of joy and renewed hope to show the world that there is a better way.
St. Mark the Evangelist, pray for us. Mm -hmm.